Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday sales call. Every Tuesday morning, 9 o'clock Pacific, we're here. My name is Dave Savage. I'm the CEO of Mortgage Coach. If you are on this call, you're a customer or you are invited by a member of Mortgage Coach, so connect with me on LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, subscribe to our YouTube page, and hopefully you've downloaded our apps and you're using our solutions. Our mission is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We believe every family, every borrower should make a confident mortgage decision that aligns with their financial goals and do it in a manner that they actually understand. So as, a, as an industry, most loan officers don't, um, one, that they don't have that as their mission, and two, they don't execute on that. We're committed to helping you do that. So one of the reasons we rolled out our new Mortgage Coach University every single weekday for the first three weeks of the month, we're doing a 101 basic training at 8 o'clock in the morning, and we're doing 102 advanced training at 2 p.m. Uh, advanced would be for anybody that's created over 20 mortgage coach reports. You, you, know, you know the basics and now go through the advanced. So totally dedicated to your training. Uh, excited to have our special guest today, Mr. Steve Harney. Steve, welcome to the call. Thank you very much, David. I appreciate it tremendously. It's an honor to be here. Well, it's always an honor. You always deliver tremendous value. Uh, looking forward to seeing you at Sales Mastery in just a few few months. I'll bring you in more formally in about three or four minutes. Sure. Uh, I was thinking about you, Steve, and actually talking to Todd Duncan about you. We're both excited to be uh, sponsors this year at Sales Mastery. But I was at Todd Duncan's boot camp on Friday, and, and Mastery is spectacular. And I recommend all mortgage professionals go there. It's a great place to learn. It's in a great venue where you can really have a transformational experience. Uh, but his boot camp is just awesome. You know, there's usually about 120 mortgage professionals. Everybody is very serious about business. And I had the honor of sharing what, what I framed as the optimal mortgage experience. And I think this aligns well with what Steve's going to cover today. I'm not going to steal any thunder, but I want you to just write that down, the optimal mortgage experience. And a couple times throughout this call, I'm going to ask you, are you delivering that to every single family that you serve? Uh, before we bring in to Steve, another great pre-frame for the conversation with Steve is we know TRID is coming. And we interviewed Mitch Keiter, the I think the number one compliance attorney in America in Washington, D.C. All of our CEOs either know Mitch or work with Mitch and his firm. And we interviewed him. And I think what was special and what sets up this call well is this was a quote from Mitch. TRID is all about communicating educating and managing the borrower and the realtor experience. So when you have attorneys telling you TRID, which is the biggest compliance change we've probably ever had in our industry in terms of changing our sales process and experience, and the attorney, this is a quote, his words in the conference, I think that we need to pay attention. We need to raise the bar. So one of the things that our team here at Mortgage Coach did is not only did we post that entire call in our YouTube page, we actually made a playlist. So if you go to our playlist section and you click on TRID prep quick hits, we, we took every question that we asked Mitch, so two minutes, five minutes, six minutes, what was his response to that question? Obviously, this one was one of our favorite questions. Uh, it was around the total cost analysis. The, the specific, specific question to Mitch was, what are some of the considerations for pre-disclosures like the mortgage coach total cost analysis. And here's six minutes of what Mitch had to say. So mortgage coach members on this call, you already have the total cost analysis. If you want it more integrated into your platform, you know, send me an email, Dave at Mortgage Coach, or give a push to your, your leadership to, to get Mortgage Coach more integrated into your platform. Because again, another great question or another great quote from Mitch, realtors, realtors need to be even closer relationships. You're going to need to communicate with them even more often because collectively, you're going to need to communicate with the buyers. So, so the bar is rising. And, and really, for guys like Steve Harney and myself, the bar has been pretty high all along. But I, I do believe some of the compliance shifts, and Steve, maybe before you go through your slides, you might want to weigh in on your perspective here. But the bar is rising. Let's be proactive. So, yeah, so and I can't agree with you more, David. Uh, with that the what we need to do is you have there are certain areas that the mortgage you know team you know that's involved in the real estate team and you should be partners with your realtor 
you know, not just call them realtor partners. You should be their partner, just like they should be your partner. And that education right now, your side of that will probably give them better education than their side will. So that's a place where you can really dominate. And I love the fact that Mortgage Coach makes it so simple for you and gets the best information out to you and under, helps you understand that not only do you have a legal and ethical obligation to, to educate, I, I think you also have a moral imperative to educate the consumer so they better understand what's taking place so they're less confused. Absolutely. And I think as everybody prepares, I think this concept of you need to have a digital strategy needs to, be, needs to go beyond that. You need to have a digitally transformed company. And, you know, so if you're in the C-suite on this call, you're a head of production, you're a branch manager, think of your branch, think of your organization. And if you're a loan officer, if you are going to execute on this and have better communication with the buyer and the realtor, it's all about digital. You know, that's why at Mortgage Coach, we've, we've invested to have apps so that you can deliver a digital experience, whether it's to a family after you send a link, whether it's meeting with a realtor. And again, I, I rolled this out last week. It's going to hit any day now. So keep an eye out for the next download of the Mortgage Coach app. It's going to give you the ability to not only drive Edge Live on your mobile phone, but it's going to give you the ability to actually record a video that integrates with the Mortgage Coach report. So it's time to bring in Steve Harney. I think uh, you know there's a lot of things about Steve that I like. Uh, I'm excited about this content today. But the thing I'm most excited about is just his values, his mission. Uh, Steve, I pulled this off your website uh, this morning as I was preparing. But I know this comes from the heart. So uh, more importantly than just the tactics you're going to teach, it's the values behind it, my friend. So good if to have you, you on the If you walk into call. our corporate offices, the first thing you see are plastered on the wall just as you walk in is exactly that quote. That's how much we believe it. We want everybody walking into our office, whether they work there or visiting, to know exactly what we stand for. And that's that's what we stand for. Well, I, I can't wait to hear how Google has uncovered the missing link to agents, uh, zero moments of truth. I've, I've read about it, but I'm looking forward to hearing your perspective on it, my friend. Okay, fair enough. So, Steve, I'm going to share the, 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 my, um, your screen so that that should pop up any second now. And then if you could also, for anybody who doesn't know who you are, uh, I don't think that's too many people, but let's just assume there's a few. Give them just a kind of a brief heads up on your backstory. Okay, uh, real quickly, been in the real estate business for 35 years. Uh, the first eight years of those 35 years, I was uh, an agent. The last seven of those eight years, I was a top agent in my county. Uh, so I sold a lot of houses, listed and sold a lot of houses. They then uh, offered me a management position uh, where I, run, I ran one of the biggest real estate offices production-wise in the entire country. Uh, and we did a really good job there. I had a great team. Um, from there, I decided I was going to open up my own firm. I opened up a real estate office that three years later was 13 offices and 550 agents. So we know how to educate agents. We know how to help them grow, and that's what attracted so many agents to us. Um, and I saw that company a couple of years back and thought I was going to retire. That's when I realized I wasn't in real estate all those years. Real estate was kind of in me all those years. So in 2008, 2007 going into 2008, when the whole world was falling apart for every one of my friends that owned a real estate company across the country, I decided I was going to come back in and help them the best I possibly could by making them aware of what was taking place in the market. That started a company called KCM, which is our realtor product. Um, and we got them through those foreclosures and those short sales and helped them restructure their business. Uh, again, if you look at the top 25 companies in the country, 17 of them are our clients. Uh, so we, we were very successful in, in, in helping a lot of people. Uh, and then when things started getting really crazy on the mortgage side, the, the impact of the crash, uh, I realized that, you know what? You know, a consumer is not going to be truly served unless the best realtors in this country align themselves with the best mortgage professionals in this country. That's really when the consumer is going to get the, the best experience in purchasing a house, both short-term and long-term. Uh, and that's when I decided to, to open the company Bridge Builders, which was about two and a half years ago. And now we have uh, a little over 1,000 loan officers across the country that um, subscribe to Bridge Builders. And what we try to do with Bridge Builders is help them build a better relationship with their realtor partners. But really, the bottom line to the whole thing, you know, money's part of it. There's no question about that. 
We all need to put a roof over our family's head, uh, ha uh, heads. We all have to put food on our family's tables. But the bottom line, there's a mission to this. It's for the consumer to really, for the business, to the industry, to really move forward, you know, they deserve the best on both sides of this thing. They have to be very comfortable. The buyer has to be comfortable personally that they got the right house and financially that they got the right financing on that house. So I've spent the last several years of my life just trying to put together those best realtors with those best mortgage professionals. I love it. There, and there you have it, bridge builders. So walk us through some thoughts and help us execute better on that vision because I know everybody on this call wants to do that. All right. Well, one of the things you, we have to look at, whether they be a buyer or a realtor considering you, um, how are they finding out about you? You know, what, what's taking place? And I know that, you know, the old days we'd always bring, you know, bagels into their, their uh, um, early morning meetings or we'd have a lunch and learn and bring pizza and most people came for the pizza and, you know, we try to teach them a little bit about the programs we had and the rates we have and how we, unlike other companies, are very trustworthy and very honest and work very hard and, Every single mortgage professional is doing the same thing, saying the same things. But what's taking place now is agents are really looking, and so are buyers, looking much earlier on in the process. And Google actually did a study on this, a several year study on this, and it came out with some interesting information, which I want to share with every you know, realtor that we have in our program on the KCM side and every loan office that we have on the bridge builder side. Um, and Dave asked me to share it with you today. And again, you know, aligning ourselves with mortgage coaches you know, the top of the industry, so it's it's an honor to be speaking with everyone here. I do want to let you know that my staff, who put the, the presentation together with me, we understand you gave us an hour of your life today. That's a very big investment. We hope we give you a return on that investment. That is our goal. Basically, the sales process in the past is pretty simple. The buyer saw a hot deal. You know, there was a house out there, either they drove by or they went to an open house, or they saw an advertisement, and that stimulated them to say, all right, you know what, it's time for us to buy. The next step, as far as the mortgage is concerned, is once they bought that house, they had to get financing. And once they saw that house, they had to get financing. And that's the person-to-person -person meeting, whether it be face-to-face, -face, whether it be through the mobile um, experience. You're meeting with that uh, buyer and in order to better help them go through the process. And that's how your brand is built. How did you handle that person-to-person -person meeting? Then very obviously, over the length of time that they're in the house, they get a determination. Did the realtor really sell them the right house, did the mortgage professional really offer the best mortgage for them? And the people who, who dominate the, both the person-to-person -person meeting and the experience, the lifelong experience, build a brand that makes them want to refer them and you reuse them again. All right, so that's the old process. And let's bring it to a different industry to understand it. If we look in 10, 12 years ago, and we in thinking about buying a car, and this beautiful BMW, we either saw it on television or it drove down the block and caught our eye. What was the next step we took automatically? Next step is we went to a BMW dealership and met this gentleman. And he would sit with us and he would open up a book and show us the different colors that comes in. He let us sit in the couple. He would show us, you know, the, the uh, what kind of wheel packages, what type of stereo system we can order. And we would spend time with them. And, he would run back and forth to this make-believe manager in the back trying to get us the best deal. So that face-to-face -face or that person-to-person -person was the first thing that took place. Then over time, 10 years later, we would look back at the car and say, did we have a good experience with the car? Did we decide that we're going to buy a new car or a different car? Or did we decide we'd never buy a BMW again? That was determined over time. So the sales process was very simple. We found something by, we met someone person to person or face to face, and then we determined whether or not we made a good decision that day by the experience of that car. Well, in your business, the great news is that person to person meeting is still very important. The overall lifetime experience is important. And the great news is that with Mortgage Coach, you have those two covered tremendously. All right, whether they're looking at an open house and you have your information out there, the agent put you out right in front of those people in case they had any questions, whether it's the fact that you're helping them go through the process and that person-to-person -person meeting or that, you know, uh, digital meeting that you have. But you have everything you need to make sure that you win that person-to-person -person meeting because you look so much better than everybody else because you're a mortgage coach client. And number two is, if you decide to go back to them in three years 
and you kept in touch with them and you decide to go back in three years because they should be refinancing or they're thinking now about moving up to a new home. They want to use you again because the experience was so good. So the sales process, the way it always stood, you totally dominated and Mortgage Coach helped you do that. Now, the interesting thing is things are changing and that's what Google studies show. See, it's not the first time you meet a person is not when you meet them or have an online experience with them or a digital experience with them, I should say. What Google found, and it's quoted by the chief officer at uh, VifaKey, when consumers hear about a product today or service, their first reaction is, let me search online for it. And so they go on a journey of discovery about a product, a service, an issue, or an opportunity. They don't first go to the dealership. As a matter of fact, right now, if you found a car and you were going to go buy a car and say, listen, that car is really, really gorgeous, whether you saw it on television or, again, you saw it in a parking lot, that's the car I want. Your next stop is not a person-to-person -person meeting. Your next stop is online. You build that car online. And as you're building it, the prices change. You can pick out the style, the color, the wheel alignment, the whole interior of that car. And based on what you're clicking on, what you're adding, will change the price up at the top. So by the time that you actually get to the dealership, really basically what you're trying to figure out is, am I comfortable in it? Do I fit in it nice? Is it something that I can see out of all four windows easily? But a, a big part of what the big part of the decision making process has already been handled for you. Now that's the that industry. So what did, did Google say? We have to realize that the sales process has changed. They call it the zero moment of truth. That before there's a person-to-person -person meeting, again, whether it's face-to-face -face or digitally, before that, there's something that happens, and that's the online search. Now, study after study has shown that 70% of the buying decision is now made before the prospect ever talks to a salesperson face-to-face, -face. and this number is growing daily. So wait a second, they're searching for either a product or service online. They're making the decision whether this person or this house or this car is right for them. And almost 70% of that decision is already done before they get there. So what Google explains is the fact that that zero moment of truth, it happens online, not in person, not face to face or person to person, typically starting with a search on Google, Bing or Yahoo. The consumer is in charge, pulling the information she wants rather than having it pushed on her by others. They're, you know, they're in their living room or sitting in their bed at night, checking things out. And it's emotional. The consumer has a need she wants to satisfy and an emotional investment in finding the best solution. That's what the zero moment of truth is. Basically, what Google said is, if you're available at this zero moment of truth when they're searching online, your customers will find you at the very moment they're thinking about buying and also when they're thinking about thinking about buying. You're there at the decision-making process. And according to Google, actually that zero moment of truth is more important in, in the, ultimately deciding whether they're going to purchase that particular car than the car itself or the face-to-face -face or person-to-person -person meeting. The single thing that we must win is that zero moment of truth when they're checking us out online. Let's go to a different industry again, because sometimes when we look at it from a distant industry standpoint, um, it makes it more sense. Let's not talk about them picking you as their mortgage professional. Let's talk about them finding the house. See, back in the day, what did they do? They saw an ad. And if they saw an ad in the paper that they really liked, what were they forced to do? Go to the real estate office. And when they got to the real estate office, what did they do? They went through the sales process. They had already saw the house they wanted to see. They met with an agent in a person-to-person -person meeting. And we hoped that both that house and that experience with the agent turned out to be a very nice experience over the next 10 to 12 years while they lived in that house. But it was the old sales process. What happens nowadays when they see an ad? They don't first go to the office. They go right to online search. And when they search online, they can get all sorts of information about the house. 
They can get up to 24 pictures. They might know that house better than the agent does when the agent shows them the house live. They can get all sorts of neighborhood reports, whether it be on crime, whether it be on the school district, whether all the decision making that they can possibly need is there for them before they ever met the agent. So what does that mean? Well, the same thing in our business, in the mortgage industry. They're going to check you out before they decide. Now, even if a realtor says, this is a great mortgage person, this is the person you should do business with. They're going to give you a name. What's one of the first things they're going to do? They're going to go back home and say, let's check this person out. And where do they go to do that? They'll go to Google, they'll go to Bing, just what Google told us. They'll go to a search engine, type your name in, and find out exactly what the situation is. According to a recent Google study done for the real estate industry, two out of three buyers extensively research their agent online before doing business with them. I don't think that number would change much if we did a survey like that in the mortgage industry. They're going to look for you online before they make the decision that they're going to meet you or get on the phone with you or have a digital experience with you. And again, what they see online is more important than anything else in the decision-making process. So sometimes when I'm talking to realtors and some mortgage professionals, when I let them know this, their first thought is, uh-oh. What does that mean? Let's go over this again. What do I have to worry about here? So let's break it down. Again, the three things that make the zero moment the truth. It happens online, the consumer is in charge, and it's emotional. Let's break them down so we can talk about them in our industry. Number one, it happens online, typically starting with a search on Google, Bing, Yahoo, or any other search tool or engine. And where do they really look for us? Probably, if, if any place here. They'll check Facebook. Why? Because everyone in the world is on Facebook. They'll type your name in. What do they see? They might go to LinkedIn. You, more professional people might go to the LinkedIn site. What do they see there? If you're tweeting things out, if you're on Twitter, what, what are you tweeting out? And Google Plus also. And what we've come to find as we start looking at this, most people, what they do on their social media sites is they try to brag about themselves. We call it the peacock effect. They want so much for people to say they're the best that they try to tell them they're the best. We're number one at this. We're number one at that. We're number. Everyone argues they're number one at something. Now, we all know that they might be number one in loan originations, but in the, the, the small print all the way to the bottom of the ad, it's on Tuesdays and Thursdays between 2 and 4 o'clock. But the ad says what? We're number one. All right? We have to realize that that's not really what's playing with the consumer anymore. Us bragging about ourselves or our company, that we definitely have to have a unique value proposition, and we have to be able to sell our company's unique value proposition. And there comes a time for that in that meeting when you're person to person. But that's not what they're looking at online. See, what they're looking at online is different. That's when we go to number two. The consumer is in charge. They want what they want. They want to pull the information they want rather than having it pushed on by others. They don't want to, information about you. They want information about how you can help them. Sometimes in marketing, this is known as content marketing where instead of bragging about yourself or promoting yourself, you're promoting things that, is, that are important to the consumer. So here's a great quote from HubSpot, probably the largest you know, um, consultant agency regarding uh, content management. Content marketing puts customers first. Instead of bothering them with ads, it supplies them with genuinely useful, entertaining, and interesting content. When they get online, they want to see that you care about them. They're not going to care about you until you, they know you care about them. How do you show that online? Well, what do you post for them? You know, what do you give them? According to Marketo, another great marketing company, um, consulting company, when you freely give your audience something so valuable that they'd be willing to pay for it, you build trust, which ultimately is your most powerful selling tool. Now, the um, Dave said right from the beginning he was talking about Todd, and you know we know that you know I think Todd coined the phrase trusted advisor. 
throughout all, or in, throughout my 35 years, building trust was crucially, crucially important for the realtor and the mortgage professional. But at this time in history, it's even a bigger um, win if you can build trust. I almost say we rebuild trust after what happened over the last seven or eight years. And it's not just in our industry. The whole world fell apart. That's why Ford and their mandate, Ford Motor Company, put this is the single most important thing you can do. Building trust is crucial. Weary of misinformation, people are making integrity a new form of competitive advantage. More important than ever to building brand equity, meaning what your brand is, and differentiation, how you differ from every other mortgage professional, trust has become a precious commodity. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples. The great news at Mortgage Coach, they give you examples. You can share this stuff on your Facebook page, on your Twitter page. Now, you might be saying, well, why would I want to share something, you know, that, you know, you know more people come to Dave saying, I want to get all the information and, and be the best uh, broker, you know, mortgage professional. But what you have here is by putting this type of information out, you're letting them know that you care about education. You're not, you're not there just as a salesman. You're there as a teacher. And Dave Ramsey put it best. He talked about the fact that when you're dealing with you know, any sort of finances, whether it be real estate, whether it be mortgaging, whether it be stocks and bonds, whether it be insurance, you want someone with the heart of a teacher, not the heart of a salesman. So you want to convey that online. Here's Lori Richardson, a great loan officer out in Denver. What she did is she made sure on Facebook that she put down, hey, listen, compelling data to show sellers now that they are sitting on the fence, uh, that are sitting on the fence, I should say. And she actually posted that selling your house in 2015, don't miss the opportunity. And she posted a graph along with this. You would click on that article. It's a full article with a graph in there. She's making sure that her realtor partners understand she's trying to help them with their business. So if a realtor was thinking about maybe using Lori, she would click and look Lori up in Facebook. And what does she know about Lori after she does? Lori knows what she's talking about in the industry, and she's trying to help. Lori's not bragging about herself. She's trying to help the customer, whether that customer be the realtor or whether that customer be the, the end buyer. Steve Stradivaca up in Iowa, same thing. He makes sure that he constantly posts great information, not bragging about him, but helping the market move forward. So whether a buyer's looking Steve up or whether an, an agent's looking Steve up, he has great information at their fingertips. And again, why is that important? Of course, the number two reason is the consumer wants information rather than having, you know, sales pushed on them. So what makes a zero moment of truth? Number three, it's emotional. The customer has a need she wants to satisfy and an emotional investment in finding the best solution. They're there because they want to be there. So we've already talked a little bit about you need great content. There's no question about that. But let's also understand that the content has to be seen. And where do most people find us? Again, on social media. They might look at your website, and I'm not saying websites aren't important. But they know on the website you're giving them, you know, the structured resume type of look. And people are going deeper than that right now. There's almost no one that, you, if you're going to a party, you know you're going to meet somebody you know, and you know their name, you might look them up online before you even get to the party. They're definitely going to look you up online before they decide to do the financing on the largest investment most of, them, most of those families are ever going to make. And I like a lot what Jay Bear said. Content is the fire and social media is the gasoline. In order to get your brand out there, ladies and gentlemen, you have to make sure, all right, that you're on the, you know, some sort of social media. Now, I understand you have to check with your compliance department. You have to make sure that the, the information is really, really good, and you have to make sure that it meets whatever the criteria are. But I'm just also understand that the most important way businesses are distributing their content is through social media sharing. So those great pieces of information that your company makes available to you, all I'm saying is make sure you get that information out. We're doing more and more business at Bridge Builders with companies, not just individual loan offices, saying we want our loan offices to share some great information. 
but the challenge is sometimes getting it. Also, when you're sharing, now I hope everyone on this call knows that next month, June, is National Home Ownership Month. Real, the realtors really promote that in a big way. Well, instead of just talking to him about it, let's have some pictures because images and photos are the most important tactic in optimizing social media posts. So the Joint Center of Housing Studies did a, uh, a survey you know, over at Harvard University there. They did a survey. What are the main reasons people buy homes? All right, and they listed the top 15. The one on the left is an exact from there. You can select the community where uh, people share your values. The one on the right is not. They wanted to be able to have their children grow up the way they wanted to grow up, and we tweaked that a little bit. The landlord doesn't decide if your child should have a best friend, meaning whether you should have a pet or not. But they're visually appealing images that are very, very simple, quoted from a, like a, a source that's readily available. But you're giving it to a way. To give it to them in a way that they can actually put a campaign together. June is crucially important. National Homeownership Month. Let's help our agents and let's make sure we're posting things that let people know we understand how important home ownership is. Why people should buy a house and they're not just all financial. As a matter of fact, the top four from the survey are non-financial reasons. The first financial reason in the survey is number five. And the survey said home ownership is important because paying rent is stupid. Again, we consistently see the social network posts with photos getting 60% or more likes and comments on average than posts uh, without photo content. So not just have great articles, put a, associate a great um, picture with it. It will affect the amount of people that you get involved with. So again, what are we talking about here? We're talking about the zero moment of truth. When they check you online, are they going to get involved with you? Are they going to see something that they're going to say, you know what, here's a loan officer I have to deal with. I'd be stupid. My family would be stupid for not dealing with that. Tweets with images receive 18% more clicks, 89% more favorites, and 150% more retweets. Here's a simple thought. Tweet something out that's important. The four C's of getting a mortgage. Tweet out, it's National Home, you know, uh, Homeownership Month. Put a beautiful picture to it. Because now, if you do that and they start retweeting or they start sharing your post, they're sending it out to all their friends, all their neighbors. And people are clicking on it, getting great information. And guess what they're going to wonder about after they read the great information? Can I get more of it? If they can get more of it, guess what they're going to look to? Well, where did this come from? That's what Google's talking about in that zero moment of truth. You could win that in a really, really, really big way. Now, if you go to the Facebook side, and I know that
That's what we're talking about here, ladies and gentlemen, very simply. If you're going out there and you're giving them great information where they can find you online, they're going to use you and they're going to share what you did. So now let's take a little example. A mom, a 27-year-old kid, decides that he's moving out of the basement with his wife and his little kid, and they're going to buy their first house. The mother's all excited for a whole bunch of reasons. She wants her grandkid to have their own backyard, and she wants to get rid of the, the son, the daughter, and the kid so she can move on with her life. But she wants to make sure they make the right decision. So when they start going out and they're looking at houses, and they start getting names of, like, here's a realtor you should use, or here's a mortgage professional you should use, guess what mom's doing immediately? She's going in and she's searching you online. And if one of her friends shared one of your posts about something that was vital in the industry right now, she sees you in a different light. She sees you as a market expert or a mortgage expert, a thought leader. Guess who she's going to suggest her, her son use? Now, again, what I just said before, and we're winding up, Dave, just so you know, putting it all together. The educating the target audience will now become the top selling point of many brands for whatever industry they are in. This all goes back to what Google's saying. It's all about teaching. What Dave put up at the very beginning is crucially important. We want to make sure the families are confident in both the decision of which house to buy and what mortgages they're getting. That's our responsibility. And like I said before, it is our legal and ethical responsibility. We're held to the, our feet are held to that fire. But I think it's so much more than that. I think we have a moral obligation to try to help those first-time homebuyers. Because studies show that almost 40% of them think they still need 20% down, even after all these new 3% programs are introduced. 40% of the public think they need 20% down. How many buyers is that keeping up on the fence because they'd be embarrassed because they don't have that savings? They've only saved 12% of the price of the house. Well, there's nobody on this phone call or this webinar that can't get a person with 12% down and who has decent credit and, you know, or good credit and, you know, a, a decent background. They can get you a mortgage. My God, if they're a vet, you can do it at 0% down. But the consumer doesn't understand that. And whose responsibility is to educate the consumer? Again, one of the great things about, you know, uh, bridge builders is that's all we're about is educating. And one of the reasons we love doing stuff with Dave and the mortgage coach, he's got the same exact goals. As do, I'm sure, the hundreds of people on this webinar right now. We just have to make sure that we realize that and we're working toward that goal. Don't sell anything. Rand Fishkin, the author of The Art of SEO. Don't sell anything. Instead, earn the awareness, respect, and trust of those who might buy. They're buying you. They're buying your services. Don't sell them. Earn their awareness by educating them. So, as we said all through this whole um, webinar, there's a stimulus to buy. They found a house. Now they want to go ahead and get the financing for that house. Their first step now more than ever is they're going to look you up online first. They're going to see who you are, what you stand for, before you ever get to that person-to-person that -person meeting. Now I know that all the professional realtors and mortgage professionals know how to handle that person-to-person -person meeting, whether it's face-to-face -face or not. We, you know you're going to, I know you're going to give them great experience the rest of the time they're living in that house. You're going to give them the right mortgage right up front, and you're going to contact them if, they, if there's numbers that show that they might want to refinance, or if they're thinking about moving up in a couple of years, you'll be right there for them. What this webinar was about is realize there's a step before those two steps. And let's make sure we're as prepared for when they introduce, we're introduced to them online as we are when it's person to person.
Dave, that's the webinar that I'm from my side. Why don't you take it back over and see if they have any questions? Good. So, folks, um, we're going to go through and make this actionable from a, a mortgage coach perspective. Steve and I are going to continue this conversation. Uh, we are going to have time. If anybody has a question for Steve, please put those in the GoToMeeting question section. And uh, we will do our best to bring some of those questions in. So a thought I want everybody to think about, I mean, there was a lot of wisdom in this. And I think a lot of folks are going, yes, I know this. I know online presence online presence really matters, uh, but are you really executing it at the, at the way that's going to maximize your success? So this quote about shareability, I think shareability is critical, and we're going to talk about that in a lot of different ways. I think what's get, what get overlooked a lot is just call it the, the, the small group of people that are actually have the most influence over the borrower, the realtor. In many cases, they're the referral partner that gave you the lead. Let's face it, there's, there's a family member, whether it's the genius buddy at work or the genius father-in-law that's bought 20 homes, that, that either causes confusion sometimes, sometimes it costs you the relationship. And so I think it's important that when you think of shareability, you're not just thinking about how can we get the most likes on Facebook. You gotta think about shareability around the people that surround the family that's making, whether it's a real estate decision, if you're a realtor on the call, or whether it's a mortgage decision, are you providing content in a way that's not only shareable in a global way, but it's shareable to the decision makers? So one thing I always like about Steve is, is he's just always playing where the puck's going. And I think you know, this is a theme when I interview the top 10% performers in the industry, and when I interview the top 1%, they all, they're all chasing the different, a different place where the puck is going. They're going where the puck is going, not where it's at. So, so when you look at the industry today, this is where average loan officers are going. This is where they're investing their time, their energy. They're missing that step. Again, we're very passionate here at Mortgage Coach in that there's a better way to deliver what's going to be called the pre-LE loan estimate, you know, where to, how to deliver that. This is the traditional way. Now, with the new sales process, one of the reasons why we, we love Steve, we love bridge builders and the entire team, is that when you look at, you know, whether it's stimulus, whether it's online research, whether it's the person-to-person -person conversation, whether it's the experience, I mean, the loan experience, the after the loan closes experience, they've got great content. So, so Steve, I put this slide together while you were presenting because it just, to me, this is the modern uh, sales process that you and I both power. Any, any thoughts or comments? Well, the, the single most important thing, and I, and I think that you're right, that you know, we're real good, and salespeople are real good at that person-to-person -person meeting, and we just have to realize that we have to be just as good as that online search, and exactly what you were just saying along those. And I think that there are, are tremendous things. You know, I, you know, this isn't about bridge builders. We try our best to, to, to give some great content for you to use in that situation. But even as a mortgage coach client, which you already are right now, there's so much great information that if you use that to let them know even online how important it is that they have a mortgage professional who knows what they're doing. And you don't have to say me, me, me. Just talk to them about what they need to know and they'll realize that, well, you're the educator, not the salesperson. And that's where everyone is drifting to right now. They want someone who cares about their family and can help them feel confident, all right, and help their family make sure that they're making the right decision. So I think that there's a lot of information that you give, David. You know, uh, we dedicate our business to it also, but you give a lot of information that they can use just exactly in that way. Because that online search, and I know we're all aware of it. I'm not sure. I, I was shocked to know that the online search was actually more um, powerful in the person making the decision than even the face-to-face. -face. It makes all sorts of sense to me, but I didn't realize that, you know, up front. So we, we had a question in here from Jackie Jones. Her question is, what is the first step in getting started with an online presence? Do I obtain a coach? Well, Jackie, I'll give my first answer, and then I'll let Steve do it. Uh, if you're not already a customer of Bridge Builders, uh, it's a great, great step. I mean, obviously, you're on this call, so you have Mortgage Coach. In all of the Mortgage Coach touch points that I'm showing, you know, like driving the mortgage options, but when it comes to content like this, the research that he showcased for Lori, you know, Lori is a client of Steve's. Steve, if people want to get in touch with you on this call, how would they reach out to you and learn more about 
uh, being a member of yours? All right, probably the easiest way to get started is we have a blog that's a free blog and you get an idea of what kind of content we, we supply. It's at keepingcurrentmatters.com. All right, that's the blog that we put out every day to buyers and sellers and both agents and um, mortgage professionals use that sometimes to share on their site. So that's a free way they could do it. Once they're on that, if they decide that they want to go to another level, well, you know, what they should do is sign up for the blog to get it on a daily basis. That's what most people do. You just have to, you know, put in your, your uh, email address. And then we'll send you out different times when we're doing uh, webinars on certain aspects of it, and you can get more involved in it. But probably the best way is to do it free, have some content you could at least get started with, and then if you decide you're going to uptick your, your sessions, then you can get involved with the, uh, the Bridge Builder program. But I would go to keepingcurrentmatters.com forward slash blog, and um, you can go on there. And the content's great. Our blogs are shared thousands of times every day. The content is really real. The free content is really great. The, the Bridge Builder content is like over the top unbelievable, but even the, the, the free stuff is really good. Well, Steve, that's just like you. You could have driven it right into your membership program, and you give value, value, value. So uh, I love it, uh, although I, I can say it. You know, obviously subscribe to the free content, start really paying attention to what Steve's doing, and do become a Bridge Builders member. It's something that I, you know, to me, when I bring people on these calls, I believe that this is going to be a great hour or 55 minutes of your time. But I believe by doing business with partners like Steve is the, the ultimate value, ultimate service I can provide you for Mortgage Coach. So uh, when you look at those touch points, you want to help the family, and you want to turn that, that, on, that open house into a digital mortgage experience. So, so think of what are you giving right now to realtors? What are you giving them to help create urgency around buying homes? And, and, and then think of what we can help you guys do at a, at a greater and higher level. Think about when you're face-to-face when you're -face with a realtor or family, are you educating them in a way that when they walk away from that meeting, they continue to have that information, or are they going to forget it? So that's one of the reasons why we're so passionate about mobile is that it's a great tool when they're not with you. They've got it in their back pocket. They've got it with them. And, and when they're with you, it's a more dynamic way to have a conversation. So let's see what some other questions we have Steve, are. Before you go to the next question, if you don't mind, could you go yeah. back one thing to Steve Stradiver Rackers, uh thing? Yeah. I think it was the slide right before this. I don't know if that's no easy problem. for you. No problem. Easy for me to yeah. do. This is what Steve did is something a little unusual on, on on Facebook. He only lets realtors in to see it. He has a private group on Facebook, and he only the realtors that he picks that he wants to work with can join that private group. And he shares all sorts of great information from bridge builders in that group, the slides, the reports, everything. But he ties it into just that group. So now he has, I think it's 62 of the top realtor, uh, realtors in his marketplace that are members of his group. And he shares willingly that information. What is he building? He's building a brand of, people, of a person who cares. So as they're getting buyers, guess what is happening? They're sending him to Steve because they know Steve cares. So the, was the person, the original question was, you know, how can I build a brand? You don't even have to get crazy with it. You can just do a private brand, invite your realtor partners that you currently have in or you want to have in, and then share great information there. Sorry, Dave, I just want to let the let uh, Don't be sorry. Keep, keep bringing it. I've had lots of great value, lots of great feedback. So Chick ra um, hasn't raised his hand. By the way, if anybody wants to raise their hand and have me unmute you, I'll bring you into the conversation. You can either provide a comment or um, ask a question of myself or Steve. But he made a really good point of using um, Mortgage Coach and Steve's example as, as a case study, as a success story. So Steve's got some great content around, you know, why buy now to create urgency for first-time buyers or move-up buyers. And then Mortgage Coach is a great way to accompany that with here's an example of a customer that I helped. So, Chick, I don't know if you're able to unmute yourself and jump on the call, or at least raise your hand and I'll unmute you, but happy to do it. I also had some questions of folks that have just been members of yours, Steve, for a long time, just raving about how valuable your service is, so just an FYI on that. Uh, 
let's see if anybody does want to reach out or go to your website because I, I have a lot of people that want to get more information is that still the best way just go in and sign up well, take it, your blog if and... they if they if they're ready to go you know like I like to bring people along slowly so I don't want to rush them if they're ready to go and they they're saying hey listen this is what we would like to do then what I would suggest that they do is this they go to uh, www.bridgebuilderskcm bridgebuilderskcm.com and they can go ahead and get involved with the program there that you have the site right there becoming a bridge builder what we do just for a second Dave the exclusive agent webinars we do them every six months we do webinars directly to your agents I do the webinar myself I pick the most important information we can and six times a year every other month we give that to those we also give you all sorts of presentations for your lunch and learns full PowerPoint presentations with the audio uh, so you can explain it uh, we give you transcripts of a monthly report saying what's taking place that month so your lunch and learns become very very powerful and then the months we don't do the exclusive agent webinars we do strategy calls so what I would be willing to do if anybody wanted to get an invite we're having our next strategy call tomorrow if anybody wants to get an invite I'll put you on that strategy call to get a feel for what we do just email me at steve at stevehoney.com and I'll forward you a link that you can get right on that strategy call tomorrow and you can see what we do because on those strategy calls we only meet with the loan officers all the bridge builders and we help the bridge builders understand what the agents need over the next 60 days tomorrow we're talking about how to get a bid accepted in a multi-bid environment how to get their offer accepted in a multi-bid environment we're covering how to get two listings this week because it's such a listing inventory and then we're going to talk a lot about the National Home Ownership Month and how to help your realtors build a program a uh, whole campaign for that month to drive more buyers to them so if you want to you can probably right now if you email me at steve at stevehoney.com s-t-e-v-e at s-t-v-e s-t-e-v-e-h-a-r-n-e-y dot com I'll make sure with one of my staff get you a link and we'll uh, get you onto that that strategy call tomorrow even if you can't make it if you register we'll send you a copy of the strategy call so you can listen to it at another time but that can give you a really good on a real good feel for what we do and that's probably the best way without you paying any money yet well Steve that's generous and nice I appreciate now that I did that because of you Dave well again I, I appreciate it we're, we're both doing good things in the community of the industry so I got another question good question from Scott Morales or or Morris sorry Scott if I said your name wrong but branding strategy for Dave and Steve and Steve I'm gonna let you answer it first do you think it's better to have a Facebook uh, fan business page as your personal name like Dave Savage your person or, or your mortgage pro or something more all-encompassing that may capture a broader audience and it's not just isolated to your name all but, right just just so everyone out there knows bridge build is hired and I don't want to get too crazy with this but we recently hired a person who was one of the key fa key people in ESPN's digital footprint she was a young professional out of college with a master's degree uh, business administration they hired her she worked on their digital footprint was a major player there she was um, um, pr uh, recruited from there to Bravo television where she played a major role in their digital piece we just recruited her here to bridge builders because we wanted to get you know you know what do we have to do how do we have to build this you know online presence so she was a main speaker with us if you think that you're gonna put stuff in Facebook let's take for example and, and people are gonna find it in newsfeed that's pretty much a pretty tough thing to do unless you're gonna be pay pay or promote them and we do discuss that but what I can tell you is in answer to your question what people will do is they'll type in your name and they'll see where you appear on Facebook so don't come up with this fancy thing on your page because they don't know the fancy thing what you're more concerned about is how many people that have heard of you or know of you already and are checking you out that's what the zero moment of truth is if you're talking to a, a realtor group and you're doing a lunch and learn the next thing they're gonna do before they do anything about sending a buyer to you they're gonna check you out and the way they're going to do this is they're going to type your name into Google or Bang or whatever search engine. So if you do have a fancy team name, I don't they're not going to know the fancy team name. They're not going to type that in. They're going to type in your name. 
I, KCM has been around for, you know, seven, eight years now. But still, to this day, people type in Steve Harney when they're looking for KCM, the realtor side of our, of our business, because they know Steve. All right, that's the same thing with you. If so, I was doing a Facebook page and answer that question, I would put my name. Now, you might want to put something, you know, fancy at the end of your name. So, but I would put my name first because that's how they're going to look for you. Because they're not going to find you in a news feed easily. What you want them to do is when they do go to your page on Facebook, because they're looking for you, just like they do in LinkedIn, just like they would do on Twitter. They're looking for you. They go there. They, you want to see them have great content. But the way they're going to search you out is through your name. Got it. And then I, I just had a, qu a comment from Chick, who's a, a leader of a large mortgage platform. Uh, he's a marketing leader. He put, what you put out, you attract. So if you create a Facebook page brand to what you want to attract, such as Joe Mortgage VA Loan Expert. So I, I, like, I like that. Nice wisdom from Chick. Uh, so a couple more thoughts. We're going to wrap this up. We may have one more, enough time for one more question. We may not. Uh, I do want to put a push, again, for tailoring your advice for your customers. So we're, we're coming out with our new app. You will be able to add that video to every app so that as people are making, you know, as families are making decisions, they're going through a modern mortgage experience. So I just can't emphasize enough, folks, with TRID coming, it's time to raise our, our game. We need to be able to deliver mortgage options, whether it's a prequal, whether it's helping a VA family understand uh, the, how much equity they'll have in three years on their property, add audio, add video, raise the bar, deliver it to each and every family, uh, just like they're your family. And, and remember, you don't need a digital strategy. You need to become a digitally transformed mortgage professional. So we're here every single day, first three weeks of the, of the, of the month, to teach you and train you to use our tools better. Every Tuesday, I'm doing calls like this. Every Thursday, we're doing group training. And every Friday, we're doing training for anyone who's new to the mortgage coach community. Next week, I have Tim Brahim uh, focusing on productivity and efficiency for your team. The following week, I have a very successful uh, mortgage leader. Keith is in the Seattle market. And if you type in mortgage in the Seattle mortgage into Yelp, uh, he'll, he'll be number one. And from what I understand, they're getting, believe it or not, Steve, they're getting five leads a day on average for folks that are, are searching mortgage companies on Yelp and some of the things they're doing on, Go, on Google. Now, again, this is a very affluent market, a very tech-savvy market. So what's working for them at the magnitude that it's working is probably not something that will work at that magnitude in every market. But I, I just believe in going and finding, finding the best in the market, hearing what they're doing, and then sharing that with you guys. So uh, hopefully you guys will make the next two weeks of calls. So Steve, you get the, go ahead Before Steve. Before we even get to me on that thing, you're right. In Seattle, they're probably gonna be more tuned to you know everything with the Yelp and the Google, what they're doing. But every day that goes by, the rest of the country is catching up. Every day that goes by, it's not just in Seattle and San Francisco. It's spreading across the country more and more people. So you're a thousand percent right, Dave, saying they're probably more attuned to it in the Seattle market because of who's that in the Seattle market. But the uh, that what that uh, young man's going to be teaching, what Keith's going to be teaching, applies to everyone. And every day that goes by, it applies to us more. Absolutely. So my friend. Thank you for all that you do um, for Mortgage Coach and our industry. I'm looking forward to seeing you at the Sales Mastery event. And everybody who's a mortgage professional on this call, you know, we should all have this on our wall. You know, how can we help families make better decisions? As mortgage professionals, we're helping them make financial decisions. So it's very, it's logical, it's numbers. We're funding the American dream. And for realtors, you're selling a lifestyle. And we all need to do a better job of helping our families you serve do it with more confidence. Steve, thank you very much for your time today, my friend. Appreciate yeah, it. No, Dave, it was an honor. I, you know, like I said, be aligned with such a great brand as Mortgage Coach, you know, just helps us look better. So thank you very much for the opportunity. Right on, everybody. And hey, make sure um, when you sign up for Sales Mastery, Steve and I both hope to see you there. Um, make sure you put in Mortgage Coach and let them know that we referred you there as a special discount for Mortgage Coach members. Take care, everybody. Have a great day as you leave. Let us know um, what you thought of today's call. If you're a guest and you want to get a demo, 
and learn more about Mortgage Coach, click the last option. But please, as you leave today, let us know on a scale of good, great, wow, did we surpass your expectations? How was the value on today's call? Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful day.